it's wet out here it's been stormy all morning and i think we're in for a little bit more this afternoon so i think it's time for a shop day that's what's going on today on farmer tyler ranch It's good actually that the weather is kind of bad today because that does give me an excuse to get out here in the shop and get some work done. And I've got several projects that I need to do, one specifically that needs to happen before I can plant my hay. In the opening of the video, you guys saw me make a little modification to the pipe bender here. And the reason is that I noticed these uh, I mean, we'll call these rollers because they're round, but they've never rolled when I was using the pipe bender. What they end up doing is they put a little divot in the pipe and I don't like that. There's a good example here on the feed wagon where I bent these pipes up and you can see what these rollers do to the workpiece. So I think changing this over to the flat surface of the angle iron is going to be better. I don't think that the angle iron will warp the pipe at all. We'll kind of have to see because we are going to be using this today for what i've got planned today i need to figure out a way to make some sort of a mount for a gps to put on this tractor now i know in the past i've said multiple times that i just couldn't justify the cost of a gps guidance system for this tractor for an operation my size and in the traditional sense, I still say that's true. But the other day, Brad at Larson Valley Farms, he's got a YouTube channel, that's the name of the channel, go check it out. But he turned me on to a GPS guidance app that you can run on the Android system and it's a free app. So I can add GPS guidance to this tractor for very little cost. The only kicker is it does not run on iOS. You have to have an Android platform to do this, which I have an iPhone, so that wasn't gonna work for me. But in a way that kind of worked out being better because you can buy an Android tablet pretty reasonably. And I went ahead and I'm going to pair this with a little Garmin GPS to increase my accuracy a little bit. But in order to make all of this work, I need some sort of a way to mount the Garmin and to mount my little Android tablet that I got. And for those of you that are interested in this app and this system and how I'm gonna try to make all of this work, I will get into that in greater detail in a future video. Today, we're just really gonna focus on making the mount for this tractor. I would like my screen to be right here where it's easily within a view from where I'm sitting. But as you can see, there's really no good way to mount anything on this dash of the tractor. We've got all plastic here. I mean, I guess I could screw into the plastic. I uh, just don't really wanna do that. I've got a better idea. Down here on the side of the transmission, you can see there's all of these threaded holes and this is for a loader attachment. Like if you wanted to add a loader to this tractor, this is where that would all bolt up. Obviously we don't have a loader, so these holes are not being used right now. They just so happen to be in the perfect spot that I think I can mount a plate here and then run some pipe or tube up, bend it over, and I'll basically, I'll end up having a nice little bar here where I can mount the tablet. I could put, I could weld some little tabs for lights. I could put a cup holder here. There's a lot of things that I can do. And even if I don't do half of that stuff, it'll give me a nice handle to grab when I'm stepping up onto this thing. This should be a really simple project, but it is gonna add so much function to that tractor. I'm excited. Let's get in here and get started. I've got, what, I got seven holes that I can work with here. I don't really see any need to make a plate that covers this whole area. That'd be way overkill. I think I can just make one that kind of covers these four holes it looks like we want to go about seven and a what do we want seven and a quarter by three and a half i found this piece of 3 16 plate steel in my scrap pile and i think it's going to work perfectly for these mounting flanges
thinking involved here. So the first thing that I'm trying to get done here is these, these lower mounting brackets. And the only thing that makes these a little bit tricky is the fact that the, the mounting surface on the transmission of the tractor is narrower than the hood and the body panels above it. So in other words, I cannot make this hoop all in one piece or else I wouldn't be able to get it on the tractor without like removing the hood and the bodywork and everything, which we don't want to do. So what I've decided to do instead is to make two mounting brackets and then I'll have to figure out a way to make it to where once the mounting brackets are on the tractor that I can then bolt the hoop onto them. So yeah, that's what we're dealing with now. Why not? That'll work. Figuring out how to set everything up in such a way that you can weld it and it stays straight is it's like a puzzle really. But with enough clamps and enough scrap pieces of metal, you can usually get it. See what this looks like. That looks pretty good right there. So far, this is looking pretty good. And before I weld it out completely, I just want to go hold it up on the tractor, make sure. I don't think there's any clearance issues or anything like that, but it's not a bad idea to just check because it's a lot easier to break these tacks than it would be to break a bunch of weld. I don't see any problems. I guess I'll be smart and I'll just check the other side as well. They should be the same, but you never know. ton of planning and calculations and math, but I think I've got this figured out. I've got uh, eight feet of pipe here. Well, eight feet plus half of an inch. And I've got marks along the pipe every place that I think I need a bend. I think I can get this in one shot. We're going to see. First thing is take all the slack out of the bender. And then the next thing is to just line up the mark that I have on the pipe with the center of the die. On all these dies, I've went and drawn a little mark with a Sharpie just so it's easier to line everything up. But once I've got those two marks in line with each other, then we can start bending. So the tricky thing about bending these is there's always a little bit of spring back so by my eye, I say, yeah, this is past 90, but I need to go past 90 just a little bit because when I let pressure off of the ram, you can, you'll be able to see the pipe will sort of spring open right there. So now we'll get the framing square on this and see how close we are. And yeah, we're not quite there. Close. Let's take another look here. And I went a little too far. That's all right. That's, that's actually a little easier to fix. All right, well the first bend is really good now. It's, it's like a perfect 90, which is hard to achieve with this bender, I'll tell you. But, the second bend is actually the harder one because not only do we have to worry about getting the bend to the proper degree, but we also have to worry about how the pipe is clocked in the bender so that the two legs 
line up with each other when we're done. So the best way that I've found to do this is to just put a level on this leg and when I get it straight up and down or perfectly plumb, then that seems to be pretty good. Or it seems to make the other one match it uh, good enough at least. So you can see my bubble is not perfect on this side, but it's also not perfect on that side. I think my level is a little bit off, so I always level, or I check both sides, and then I kind of split the difference, and I figure that's gotta be it. So I think we're good here. Let's bend this. Let's go ahead and get some feet welded on this hoop and get everything all bolted together, kind of like the final assembly, and see how rigid this is. Really need to get this anvil up off the ground, but, well, it's not gonna be today. Well, I think something like that. Welding the feet onto the hoop is something that seems pretty simple on the surface, but it's actually really important that these feet are at perfect 90 degree angles so that the bar doesn't lean forward or lean back. We want it to be straight up and down in relation to the brackets that are bolted to the tractor. Pretty good right there. I got the hoop set up there and it's like, oh my gosh, this is so crooked. The, the plates are twisted, the bar isn't sitting straight. What is going on here? And what I finally realized is that I've got my mounting brackets in two different sets of holes. See the bracket on this side is in the four holes towards the front of the tractor. And then the bracket over here is in the four holes to the rear of the tractor. So that's why nothing lines up. I feel better. I, I thought, wow, I've been measuring so carefully. How can it be that far off? Well, that's how. Hey, Kelly. How are you doing? Oh, you just need some of that. Okay, let's try that. That should work a little better. That looks a lot better. <laughs> when you need to transfer holes like what we're doing here, the little trick that I found is you get everything lined up where you want it and then use, like in this case, a 3 8 bit. And I can just put it in the hole that I've already drilled, spin the drill momentarily, and then it'll, it'll leave a little mark in the bracket. So now I can come back with a smaller bit, drill the initial hole, and then go ahead and drill the proper sized hole. But this is just a way of making sure that I get my hole pattern the same.
Well, I got this bar all mounted up, basically how it's gonna be, and I'm happy with the fit and finish of it. Everything looks straight and level, the bends look good. Uh, the problem is this. I was kind of afraid of that, and I, I guess I should have known that it would be that flimsy. Now, I, I guess flimsy is not the right word, but it would allow a lot of movement because there's nothing supporting this pipe. The concern here is that as we're bouncing down the field, this pipe is doing this the whole time, and my screen is doing this, and it's hard to see. What I've decided to do is I've got some one inch by three eighths flat bar. In fact, here's a little piece of it now. And I think what I'll do is I'll weld some supports down here at the base and that should help keep that pipe from flexing. We'll weld these on. I think I'm gonna do four, two on either side and uh, let's weld those on and see if that helps. All right, let's go put this back on the tractor and see if we did any good. All right, I got this thing all cinched down. So it's honestly, it is, it's better. It's still not great, but it is better. So at this point, I think that what I really need to do is just get the tablet mounted up there and drive around a little bit and just see how this does. It, it might be fine. It might demand more attention. Well, only time will tell. Despite the shakiness, I am pretty happy with this. It turned out good. I'm surprised actually that uh, that bender that I have it does not have a great reputation with me as well, but the quality of these bends actually turned out really great. And I think some of the problem that people have with that bender is they try to bend metal that it just wasn't designed to bend because when you put pipe in there, like what it's designed for, the results are actually pretty good. I'm still waiting on one piece that I need to mount the tablet up here. And once that comes, then I'd like to hook this all up and kind of take it for a test run. Maybe go down to the ranch, set some AB lines and, and measure it and see how accurate it really is. But until then, thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.